no one can recall who invited you to the wedding. In the photographs of that day, my mother looks beautiful with her cupid bow lips and her dark wavy hair. My father looks gaunt, half starved on a set painter's salary, but radiantly happy to have won the hand of Mina de Vere, silent film star and ingenue. You, the strange magician, are just visible in one corner of the wedding party photographs. You stand just to the side and slightly behind the other guests. You wear a rakish hat with a playing card tucked into the band and a ratty suit, and your teeth peer down beneath the edge of your smile, and you look directly at the camera, as if daring the photographer to wave you out of the frame. My mother had a husky little voice. It made everything sound sad and disappeared into ambient noise. Once all the studios started making talkies, well, her saucer eyes and her fluttery hands, they just weren't enough anymore. But you know that. Even if she didn't tell you herself, you would have seen it when they made fun of her in all the papers. I think maybe that's why she married my father. When she first met him, he was so poor that he had sores on his back from eating nothing but crackers. But he painted a portrait of her that was so beautiful. It perfectly captured her pale blue eyes and her wistful smile. And I think she liked seeing herself in color for a change. I think she liked that he loved her so when everyone else had forsaken her. Soon she had me to love her too. But that's when you turned up again. There's a photograph of the two of you from that first night that she performed as your assistant. You stand to one side, still in your rakish hat, but with a better suit and a cape and a grand mustache to hide your teeth. She stands to the other side in a long sequined dress left over from her last premiere at the Pantages, one toe pointed forward, big eyes smiling. Behind you both are large magician's props, a wooden throne and boxes. Soon she was performing with you every weekend, matinees and evenings, and my father and I went to as many shows as we could. And I remember that we sat in the front row and watched as she levitated, displayed golden rings, and disappeared into a box. Then one night, the show was different. My father later claimed that he noticed the differences from the starts, that she seemed nervous and missed several cues, and that you used bigger gestures than usual. But the tricks happened in the same order that they always happened. The Okito coin box, the Indian mango trick, the Bellakini egg production, and the Chungling Sioux goldfish bowls. You always perform the disappearing assistant trick last, the grand finale. The trick makes use of a box. It's painted with the face of a hideous beast and large enough for a person. It has great bulging eyes and sharp teeth that are painted down to hang over the edge of the seam. Most nights, she would enter into the box, and then she would exit through a trap door. You would reopen the box and show that it was empty, close it. She would climb back in and return to applause and delight. On this night, she entered the box as usual. You closed it, showed that it was empty, closed it again. But then, when you reopened it, it was still empty. There was no return of the disappearing assistant. You apologized and exited stage left. We sat in the audience and waited. We waited while everyone else got up and filed out, muttering, disappointed over the failure of the final trick. We waited while they dimmed the lights and swept the floors. We waited until the stage manager asked us to leave, and then we went around and waited by the back door, but she never came out. We never saw her again. You may think it's strange that I took an interest in magic, given my little family tragedy. Indeed, female magicians are the exception to the rule. I specialize in card tricks. I have to say, I don't much care for the large stage illusions that you favor. They rely on gimmicks and machinery rather than talent. Any fool can saw a person in half if she has the right equipment. No, I prefer the subtlety, the talent, that sleight of hand requires. But there is one trick that I hunted for, one large stage illusion that I wanted to find, a box painted with the face of a beast. 
I looked for it in abandoned closets of old buildings. I searched the back rooms of theaters. I waded through piles of musty costumes and moved aside a thousand props from shows long since forgotten. I attended auctions and sales, always looking for the box. I lost my mother when I was three. Maybe that's why I can never seem to keep a boyfriend, but maybe it's because I always date magicians. Eventually, I gave up my search for the box, and I had one built. You see, you can just see it in the corner of that photograph of the two of you from that first night, so I used that as a model. I gave it to the best craftsman in the, build, in the business, and he built me a wonderful box. You know, I don't think even you could tell the difference. Can you? It must be hard to tell from the inside. You were always better acquainted with my current perspective. You know, for a long time, I thought you'd be older than me. I thought I'd know you by your rakish hat and your grand mustache. But fashions change. Fashions change, and I just keep seeing you staring at me out of different eyes, just like you stare out of that wedding party photograph. I just keep making you disappear, and you keep coming back. Maybe tonight, maybe tonight, you'll be gone for good. Are you ready for my final trick? On the count of three, I will close the lid. One, two, three. <laughs>